Hi, my name's James Belton and I'm an IBM Watson and Cloud Services Adoption Leader. In a previous video I showed you how to create a Bluemix Object Storage Service instance and how to manage and upload files to the Object Store using the Bluemix interface. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the service using Swift API calls from a command line. To recap, we created an Object Store that has one container and three files. To use it via the Swift API, we need to create service credentials. To create those service credentials, click Service Credentials in the left-hand menu and then click New Credential. You can give the credential a name, so and click Add. That will just take a couple of moments to create and there you go. You can see that there's now a, uh, some JSON there which gives you your service credentials. You'll notice that I've already created some credentials uh, and these are the ones that I'm actually going to use in the ongoing example. Ongoing example. So let's switch to a command line and here I'm just using an Ubuntu desktop. So the first thing that you need to have installed on your Ubuntu desktop is Python. Um, you need Python version 2.7 or above and within that you also need the setup tools package as well as the pip package installed. There's also a couple of other things that you need installed as well. The first thing is the Python Swift client and to install that simply type python install python swift client mine's already installed so um, it's, it's saying requirements already satisfied otherwise it will download that client for you and then install it the other thing that you need to install is the uh, python keystone client so again it's like pip install Python Keystone Client and again it will download and install it but as you can see mine's already installed. Okay so let's just check that we've actually got Swift installed. So if I type in Swift minus minus version you can see there that I've got the Python Swift Client 3.3.0 installed and that's great and that's where we want to start. So let me just clear the screen and the next thing we need to do is actually connect to our object storage service. Now what I've done is I've, I've actually scripted this so I'm going to actually try and walk you through and explain what it is that I've done as well. So if I look at my script called um, Swift EMV, uh, you can see it there. So what I've actually got in this script is um, I've taken and, and pasted in effectively the JSON from, um, from the Bluemix credentials screen that I showed you when we actually created some Bluemix credentials. Uh, and there's some of these um, values here that we're actually going to use to create some um, environment variables which we then use to actually connect to the object storage service. So as you can see, we use the auth URL um, to create a, an environment variable called OS auth URL. Uh, we use the uh, project ID to create the, um, the OS project ID um, environment variable and so on. Okay, so the actual environment variables that we need to set are here. So we've got OS user ID, OS password, OS project ID, OS auth URL, OS region name, OS identity API version and OS auth version. Now you can see that where I've taken these values from up here. Um, couple of things to note, um, the uh, Identity API and the Auth version, we've well, set both of those to three because they're the current versions of the Swift API. And the other thing that you need to do is actually put a slash v3 on the end of um, the OS Auth URL as well for this thing to work. So what I've done here within my script is actually shown the environment variables that I've set. Um, and then the next thing we do is actually use Swift to then authenticate the service. So let's show this, this working. So if I type MV, 
you can now see that these environment variables have been set for me and this is the uh, the service, uh, this is the swift auth command actually connecting to the service and giving me uh, an unauthenticating material. And to show you authenticated, what I can now do is use the swift list, swift list command and that then goes away, connects to my object storage and shows me the containers that I have. So you can see there that I've got my um, my TOC files container that we saw in the uh, in, in the GUI. So what I can now do is use different um, Swift commands to to use my object storage. So if I clear the screen again, so as I just showed you, there is Swift list, and that gives me a list of all of my uh, my containers. I can create a new container if I want to. So I can do a, a swift and then post, and then the name of my new container. So I can call this, say, my new container. And I'll go away there. And then if I do another swift list, you can see that I now have those two containers there. So if you want to upload a file, I'll show you that I've actually got some files locally on this. So if I do uh, uh, an ls, you can see that I've got a couple of uh, gsip files on here. Um, so let me upload one of those. So if I do a um, swift upload, now I want to I want to actually write this into my new container. So so I can put that into my new container, and then the uh, the actual name of the, uh, the file. So I'm going to put this node uh, v6 file in there. And if I type enter. That'll just take a little while because it's a, a, a larger file. There we go. And then if I do a, um, a list on that particular directory, so I can go swift list uh, my new container. And you can see that that's installed there. And if we just quickly go back to the, um, to the GUI, and if we go back to manage and back click back to containers again you can see that my new container is there and you can see that that file is there too so we'll just quickly nip back to that if you want to see some more information about that file then what you can use is the uh, the lh switch on the list on the list command so swift list lh my new container and then you can see the size of it uh, and what kind of uh, file it is as well. So that's great. So um, if we then want to delete that file, uh, then what I can do is a swift delete, and then my container, my new container. So make sure that I'm uh, in the right area here. And then my file name again. So node, I can use node star. There we go. So um, it's actually confirmed that that's what's what's deleted. So again, I can go swift list um, my container. And you can see that that file is now actually gone. So there you go. So the other thing you can do is actually upload um, entire um, directories to this as well. Um, so um, so for instance, you can see on here. Um, they've actually got this images directory. So if I um, cd into images and then move another list, you can see that I've got several different files there. So they're all JPEG files. So if I just come back out of that and just list that again. So what I can now do is um, Swift upload. Uh, my new container and go images. And what that will then do is actually upload all of those image files. Okay, so if I now do that that um, that list again, so swift list minus lh my new 
container. So you can see that each of those image files has actually been uploaded, but um, they're actually prefixed with the name of the directory. So in this case, images slash. So unlike a conventional um, storage system, object storage doesn't have the concept of folders within folders. It will actually give you a, a fairly flat layout. So then if you actually want to uh, download that entire um, directory, as it were, to your local machine. So let's um, just quickly do that and remove this, uh, this images file from my local machine, this images folder from my local machine. Um, so do that. So you can now see that it's no longer there. If I actually want to download that again from my object storage, um, all I need to do is swift download, swift download. So then the container name, so my new container and then prefix uh, this is the prefix of the uh, of the of the folder name so images and then that will all come down just give that a second so there we go and then if I do an ls minus l on my local machine again you can see that that images directory is back so that's a really quick run through of some of the things that you can do with the with the Swift API um, via a command line and I guess that the really useful thing about this is that you can then actually start to build scripts around it so for instance you're running a backup routine what you can then do um, is script that backup routine and as part of that script actually get the backup file that you've created to then copy to your object storage Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, next time I'll show you how to do versioning and version history.